That uh, uh, Vinit uh, talk title is based on a, a reference of one of my favorite movies. So I hope that's the reference. If it isn't, well. absolutely. So uh, Vinit is a, a tech consultant working with WordPress for over 10 years. Um, he Today, he is going to be talking uh, about how design and uh, uh, user experience can make the difference between a, a good website and a poor website. With a focus on UX, uh, auditing, and uh, conversion optimization. So, please give a warm welcome to uh, Vinit Tawa. Thank you guys. Let's begin. So the success of your business is not measured by the amount of money the company has made already this year. It is measured by the more money or the new customers you're going to have this year correct new paying customers hi my name is Vinit Talwar and today I'll take you to the journey of how to optimize your website effectively so that you don't lose your users or in fact you will gain more users so let's begin so as I said my name is Vinit Talwar I'm based in Wiesbaden Germany I've been working with various industry brands so far and helping them fix their tech I'm a tech enthusiast and consultant by profession. I've built companies from scratch, so I know a numerous ways a brand will not work or brand will fail. So basically, I'm, I'll be sharing my experiences or learnings here most of mostly. I've been associated with WordPress since 2012, uh, basically helping businesses driving growth, optimize their digital experiences. So yeah, that's a bit about me. Uh, let's get to know you guys. How many of you are developers here? A lot of them, very nice. And how many of you are, I would say, business owners? Also a lot of them, nice. Um, and server specialists, so who's working with AWS, cloud, hostings? Only one, two, three, four, very good, okay. And how many of them are SEOs here? So more developers, less SEO, okay. And couple of server guys, cool. So yeah, that gives me reference. So some information about me. And also um, in the last slide, I'll be giving you a QR code where you can download this slide so you don't have to take notes. So don't worry about that. Um, also this session is anyway going to be on WordPress TV. Uh, this session is divided into two parts. So first part is some learnings. And then second part, I'm covering some case studies or some existing websites only for education purpose only. So no need to not harming anyone. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so this is how a typical website in 2024 feels like. It's like a mission accomplished, right? Um, you land on a website, you figure out how to decline all those essential cookies. You've seen those websites, right? There's a cookie banner coming up. You figure out, uh, okay, then suddenly you see a support widget come popping up from the right side. And you're like, wait, I just landed here. I don't need to be seeing that. You just close that. Then, then you figure out there's a video playing in the background. And then you're like, what the hell? And then you uh, close that. And suddenly there's a newsletter pop-up coming up. Nowhere from the back end. I mean, you just came here. And at that point, you're like, why the hell am I here? And that's my face. <laughs> when you're uh, seeing such websites. See, our job as a developers is to create a seamless and engaging user experience. But definitely not this. Okay. Let's talk about buttons. Amazing creatures. There are three types of people, those who play the button once and wait patiently, right? And those who don't press button at all and they just wait and they wait miraculously, the road will open. Okay. And there are some people who press the button hundreds of time as if pressing those buttons hundreds of time going to make the road open faster. See, which type are you? <laughs> all right. So increasing of pushing of uh, frequency of these buttons is directly proportional to users level of frustration and 
you definitely should not be doing this like will ferrell in the movie elf is doing because by doing so you're making a lot of people angry see people don't have patience at all your goal is to have a better time to interactive than this see interactivity impacts rage clicks so you're not giving people websites you're giving them experiences where they can do stuff there they can experience themselves uh they can learn something they can play around do do whatever you want they want based on whatever the purpose you're solving and users ex expect experiences to be interactive in about 1.3 times the point they are visually ready if not the rage click happens you want to know uh, if your website is getting rage clicks try installing hotjar and see the videos you will get to know what what people are doing and yeah make sure you grab popcorns before watching those videos so so that you get the idea of what you need to fix okay do not let your users wait as i said they don't have time poor performance can drive users away reduce your conversions and ultimately harm your bottom line uh it's crucial to understand and address the factors what affects your website performance a bad website performance has a measurable business impact okay see seo is not a black magic it's like a strategic practice with some key aspects relevant and high quality content content accessible to search engines good seo signals see under this last category we find core web vitals usually they are crucial these are crucial metrics that google uses to evaluate user experiences this is the same thing that uh, i was talking about with the first slide and marcus brown is also also tweeted about it the mkbhd guy uh, similar experience he also noticed so anyways so what i wanted to say is if you thought your website is done no a website is never done more businesses make the mistake of ignoring the crucial part of maintenance of the website continuously improving your website your website is never ready keep that in mind you're like i have paid my developer i hired someone and he did it no you, he need to support you all the time because that's your business you're getting customers from that right a regular updates optimizations are essential to stay competitive and provide the best user experience but how do i fix my website let's talk about different measures what do we need what can we do to fix it maybe make it amazing flawless or which areas do we need to work on my website okay see uh, the, there are five pillars of website optimization performance security accessibility seo ui ux by the way if you guys like any meme you feel free to tweet me i i would love that <laughs> you can reference this session okay uh see we will not mu focus much on the first four i will just talk about brief because uh, the colleagues here are already covering lot of the topics at least first four i can see that a lot of people are covering so i'll only focus on the uh, last slide but a bit about first four okay usability heard of it <laughs> okay um so let's start with a basic security so nothing much nothing fancy you guys know some of you might not be happy after seeing this and guess what it's kind of true see wordpress comes as a package to get you started but it is not responsible for how you manage it handle and secure your website think of it this way if a car gets into an accident it's not car's fault it's the driver's fault you as a driver is responsible for it if a tesla met with an accident it's not elon musk's fault it's the fault of you you are driving i know tesla has auto driving part i'm just giving an example okay so guess what you as i said you as a developer are the weakest link here and you need to fix these things okay uh, so as i said i'm covering bit about security so these are some few few good resources i de definitely like here um i always recommend checking out your website on securityheaders.com uh to check what kind of security headers you have how much secure it is stuff like that uh you can check on observatory mozilla and these are some other resources um install server firewall if you're running on aws uh make sure your file permissions are set um uh, yeah wsp scan was pretty good tool but now it's not available so i made a cut here <laughs> so yeah i'm we missed wp scan for sure uh you should audit your users make sure there's no null code again as i said not covering much here uh but i would like to tell you one irony so i met one cyber security company a few years back and guess what they did not have security headers installed irony right okay um 
All right. So see, there is no excuse not to upgrade to at least your latest minor version. Make sure your WordPress is up to date. Everything should be up to date. That's it. And your passwords are secure. You have a uh, not running password is equal to password one two three and stuff like that. So these are the basic security stuff. Again, someone is covering today about security. You will get to know more about it. So I'll move on to the next topic because we have a lot to cover. Uh, speed. Um, there is no excuse to have a bad performance on your Word WordPress website. Um, you can check out my previous talks on website performance on WordPress TV. I have covered about this topic a couple of times in past. So if you search WordPress TV my name, you will find more detailed topic about it. But uh, there's one topic I would cover here. Let's talk about game of um. See, whenever a telemarketing guy calls me, right, the conversation goes something like this. Hello, sir, I offer you this amazing new product that, that can do blah, 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 whatever. And then, um, can you hold um, for a second? Um, um, what exactly does it again? Um, uh, then he explains everything, blah, blah, blah. Like, let me think about it. Um, so basically you mean to say, um, 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 so I mean, I made that guy so frustrated and he didn't hang up the phone. This is what your website is doing. If it's so slow, you have to fix it. Otherwise you will have fewer downloads, donations, revenues, less sales and stuff like that. And, uh, and speed is also a ranking factor in search engines nowadays. Google core web vitals has a uh, few, uh, Aspects basically, the mainly are the three aspects, the loading, interactivity and stability. How quickly your page is loading, how soon can you interact with the page and how stable your page is during uh, the load time. Okay, These metrics combined with few more mentioned uh, here form the page experience ranking factors. For more details, as I said, check out the previous talks I've covered. You can see all the other ranking factors here and Google really wants you to speed up. Okay, these are some tools that uh, gives you idea about how good your website is doing in terms of performance. So you can always check out on these tools and they give you ideas like how good your website is in LCP and gives you a complete recommendation and you can fix the performance there. See, you need to make your users happy, not the lighthouse happy. Perfect 100 on 100 is awesome. But are your users getting what they need? So do not obsess about getting perfect 100 on 100. Make sure your user UX is Awesome. At least they're getting what they need. Sure, fix the performance. That's also good. But focus on the UX part, I would say, starting first. And thing is, these tests provide like a single numbers. However, real-time simulation is different. You need to take a look at that. These are just metrics, yet important. So don't obsess about them much, much okay? All right. Uh, well, that's true. In the web's race, if the slow are, the slow are left unseen and unsold. Okay, uh, accessibility, a uh, bit focusing, not much here, as I said, uh, maybe for next word camera probably. <laughs> okay, um, there are, these are a few nice resources I would definitely recommend checking out. You can check your website on your Lighthouse and check uh, if there is any accessibility issue. Uh, make sure your images have alt text. These are some best practices recommended by WordPress uh, at the link and the accessibility project also have a checklist there. And there was another extension called Wave Simulation, so you can also check out. Uh, how, how good your accessibility is. And I think there's an accessibility law also coming in Europe. I'm not sure. Some uh, I was reading it somewhere. So make sure you prepare your websites before that also. Okay, SEO, uh, sorry. And this is how SEO is done. Agree? <laughs> Use any website crawler and check interne internal link validation capabilities. This will enable you to increase traffic and sales with actionable performance items. So you can use any tools like Screaming Frog, etc., just to figure out uh, uh, if there are SE any SEO issues. And again, Web Dev Measure is a pretty good tool. Make sure you use any SEO plugin. All of them are good. Yoast, Rank Mat, doesn't matter. Uh, Search Console, Google Analytics. Make sure you have a meta text and all. You have a backlink set up. That's all. So again, not covering much here. So our main focus point is UI UX. So what is basically UI UX? Are they same? Are they different? Most of the time it is confused with same, but they really are not. To explain UI UX in a single slide, it is this. And in the language we speak, it is this. Okay, a user interface is like a joke. 
if you must explain it it's not that good agree but reality is most of the time your user experience is this agree okay let me correct it it's not the design is at fault it's ui without research is at fault did you consider all the use cases for your user did you even test it as a customer yourself maybe you will find this path right so that is important and ux and psychology are correlated think like your user talk to your real user before building uh, conduct user interviews maybe uh, figure out some of the persons who are using your uh, product just talk to them like conduct a user research interview figure out how they are doing consider do like a random black box testing it's like someone who don't know at all about your product just make them use it and figure out what they are doing and based on that make the assumptions and you know fix the page okay understand people why they are doing something what they are doing something and how you can make their life easier conduct user research and run workshops and key stakeholder workshops talk to them figure it out and analyze data and as i said test test and test most of the time <laughs> developers thought they made an amazing ui or designers thought they made an amazing ui uh, assuming that users going to act in certain way but there are certain permutation combination user will go from here from here different path they will click we have to really figure it out if we are covering all these use cases or not right Okay, UX is the key. A website, no matter how fast it is, it is worthless if it is not usable. Consider user expectations. How many visitors do you expect? How do you want people to do? Uh, what do you want people to do on your website? Are you offering everything your users are looking for? Are users leaving without taking an action? As I said, Hotjar is a pretty nice tool. Maybe you can take a take a look and with with popcorns, of course. <laughs> test your website in a different browser as as a random visitor consider mobile users what do you expect them to do okay and again in the end test test and test and most of the time your client do not really understand that they want certain thing and they want it now of course you need to fix that but you need to guide them also how they need to have certain things ux is all about where you are what your motivations are what your experiences are interactivity and how you feel this is a pretty good resource if you are interested in user research i definitely recommend checking out growth design case studies these guys are covering pretty nice case studies of uh, different apps different uh, plug um, websites even the big ones and they are rating them nicely so i would definitely recommend checking them out and not paid by them it's it's a genuinely nice resource okay if you ever feel stupid remember there was a guy who designed this apple mouse and you can't use it really it's it's worthless piece of shit <laughs> seriously you can't charge it and there is an h missing i just noticed <laughs> and most of the time your clients don't really understand that a better user experience leads to happier users design fundamentals you should use it also UX design is a bridge between your users and your business. Some someone once told me that UX design is easy. All you need to do is make things obvious for your users. Well, guess what? These are all everyday users. True, right? Okay. Speaking of masks, similar to this, we can't expect our users to react in a certain way. <laughs> you guys thought you're learning something, right? No, I'm showing you memes. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay but what is ux design it's a sequential process uh, so it starts with research understanding users conducting user interviews checking out your marketing persona what are your typical users are your use cases your user journey maps then move on to brainstorming taking out user flows designing wireframes then coming out the implementation phase the ui prototype front end back end most people directly start with front end back end so uh if you have time to spend and of course budget to spend i would definitely go for first two phase of course for small budget project it's not possible but if you're working with enterprises it definitely makes sense of course you can upsell it also that you know package it nicely but anyways uh the after implementation the reporting part comes the usability reporting split testing ab test hotjar test analytics and when you find issue in your reporting 
Uh, then you repeat from four, you back to two, three, four, two, three, four, wherever you find the issues, right? So reporting is also important, okay? Everyone should be on the same page. Most of your developers may want to build a tech-friendly solutions, but guess what? This might not get you the perfect results. Some training and alignment would be great here to ensure everyone understands the importance of user-centric design, correct? Okay, let's decode UX now. Companies should consider a permanent role for UX designers and UX researchers if they have the budget, of course. Black box testing should be done before any uh, go live happens because it gives you a trailer of a website you're about to release. So you test with a small five to 10 users and you figure it out. I don't know if you guys have watched Silicon Valley. Uh, there was one episode where, uh, uh, where he was showing different stuff uh, different website, uh, and it was, it was like, oh, is it uh, Apple Maps bad, or is it, I don't know, if you guys remember that episode, so something like that, you guys should do a user research test also, okay, and most of the time, your clients don't really understand that, okay, time for example, since the time is running out, and I took most of the time here, okay, better user experiences make your uh, user happy, so again, before I continue the next segment, these are the different slides, uh, different websites I'm covering. These are the real use cases, uh, different websites from India, Germany, Austria, Spain, and Portugal. And these are randomly handpicked website. I'm covering it only for educational purposes, not meaning to roast. So that's a big disclaimer. And another thing, some of these guys have already fixed it. So some of the examples are old, but this, I kept it just for uh, educational purposes. Okay. And yeah, if you want your website to be reviewed, we can talk later. <laughs> I don't want to do it publicly. <laughs> Okay, let's start with this place, the website for this place. So anybody can guess what's the issue here? Correct. Anything else? The SSL is missing, the biggest one. The URL, uh, so, okay, and you, you see when I open this first, there are like three, four redirects. So when a search, search uh, crawler is coming, there's like, FSCM, FSCM, PT, index. So four to five redirects are there. That's not good. I try to run it on the root folder. Okay, navigation, too many colors, as you said correctly. This is a cluttered layout, box layout. I mean, there's nothing wrong with box layout, but it really looks cluttered, too much text. Maybe if they would have done nice pictures here, but less colors, we can think about that. So things to improve here. Okay, next example, um, it's a, IRCTC, it's an Indian uh, railway government owned company. I mean, they make around $440 million a year. So, so that's why they deserve to be roasted. Okay. So it's a, <laughs> it's a government owned entity, uh, who's, uh, where you can book tickets there. So when I come to the website, okay. Anybody wants to comment here <laughs> before I proceed? What's wrong here? Pop-ups, correct. And? Yeah, uh, the fonts, anybody don't like fonts? Font is also bad, right? It's, uh, it, it's giving stress to your eyes, right? Okay, another thing, the, um, since I'm, um, we're living in Europe, so I will cover a lot of GDPR perspective here. So you see a lot of uh, ad partners are here. Okay, that's fine. I get this website, I'm like, okay, fine. I want to book a ticket. I try to mess around with this uh, pokey box. And I noticed that so many uh, trackers are there, 135, 84, 34. And guess what? It's just scroll started. So that means it's a big scroll here, right? Okay, I'm like, okay, let's go ahead. When you go down all the way, then you again see vendor preferences. I'm like, okay, fine. Then uh, when, I, when I looked at vendor preferences, it was also a long list. So that means there's a huge amount of trackers there. That's fine. Uh, page look clutters, font, pop-up ads, as you said, there are ads also. Uh, okay, I tried booking the ticket here. When I started typing the location, uh, I see a pop-up for login. It's a white space. I mean, you are allowing your website to be accessible in Europe. Either you should block it, or let's say if you're running a geo-targeted ads, the white space should not be there. It's not clear, like what should I do here? Okay, sure. I started typing my login detail. The page reloads, then I get invalid user. And, um, and it comes after this, Layout. It should be there. The validation should be directly there. That's not good. Okay. When I click on register, the registration form also opens like around after five seconds. 
also not good um then i was like what the ah sorry by the way this slide is in hindi but it says deals so when i clicked on the deals it take me to an amazon affiliate you're a government railway a ticketing platform you're running amazon affiliates seriously 440 million dollar earning a year and when i did the performance test also not good okay uh, next one is our favorite deutsche bahn and uh, disclaimer they already fixed this issue uh, what i'm about to say so this is a pr pretty old example but i'm just covering it to show you there is one thing wrong here anybody can guess quickly that's fine that's fine because the audience is german for the website i would cut questions time is it okay if i go a couple of minutes more okay thanks because there is a black text on the red background that's not good i mean that's not clear what what do you mean to say that that's a very small thing but anyhow i wanted to book the ticket so i uh, started booking the ticket so what i did was wait yeah i clicked on the login so when i went to the login it took me to a new domain i'm like that's fine i wanted to book the ticket so i clicked on ticket booking then it took me to another domain i'm like that's fine also but am i logged in i'm not sure where i am so what i clicked was i clicked on the logo and i went to home page and guess what i see the login button again i just logged in so that was an issue so that you should not do it uh like handle the case again you guys will be like what's wrong with facebook i like the answer nice there is not much wrong with facebook it's just a minor slightly improvement here on the form basis okay anybody want to guess mm actually it's the floating forms a form label so when you start typing email you don't know if it's a email it's a username or it's a phone number what what they are asking for then you have to delete it and come back again so that's not good same problem wikipedia is also doing they are duplicating it but the one who is doing a right implementation or i personally like is twitter so when you start typing the label goes up floating label it's a good user experience there's nothing wrong here it's just a user improvement speaking of good ux i like netflix auto play button because it's clear it's efficient you know what's going on um okay this is a old example from bank of austria so what i wanted to do was i wanted to check their cookie box so when i click configure it took me a page and telling me what to do with internet explorer they fixed it now by the way so but you should not do this case so this is just for an example uh same goes for bank of austria uh they had this issue of color red aggressive red color for a bank it doesn't make sense they fixed it now so that's good <laughs> so think about uh, okay i forgot to mention check the uh, brand color philosophy or psychology also like it gives you in some examples i forgot to cover that concept but do check it out also uh university of vienna they also fixed it there's one big tiny problem here anybody in the navigation the color is pretty light they fixed it now so that's good it's a older example university of valencia also they fixed it now i noticed it just before university uh, word come valencia last year so the navigation was broken and and yeah they didn't fix this one the cookie box and chat pop up are on top so when you're trying to okay as a gdpr the chat box should not be open so until you accepted the cookie the chat box should not be there so that's not good okay okay so then that's it i think i'll close this now this is the mobile example so yeah that's it i will put push to the last slide i had few more case studies covered but seems like we don't have time seems like we don't have time so yeah thank you vinit we will have possible uh, yeah thank you we don't have time for no questions but vinit will be here with us so if anyone wants to ask him something i'm sure he will be happy yeah. to answer thank you and if you need to download the slides this is the qr code